For the drug cartels, planes, trains, and automobiles aren't a beloved Thanksgiving movie. It's a description of their logistics machine. Toss in trucks, tunnels, and even submarines, and tonight authorities say this narco express grinds on, even as legitimate supply chains are struggling. Wednesday, November 3rd, the Gary, Indiana airport. This private jet registered in Mexico arrives with 220 pounds of cocaine, according to federal drug investigators. They say packed inside several suitcases, which are transferred to a waiting SUV. Greater liabilities if they lose their loads. I mean, it could be the difference between life and death. Former Deputy U.S. Marshal Ed Farrell says drug operatives always look for a back door away from locations where there is more attention. They went to a further away airport, which tells me there's less scrutiny. Gary Airport officials tell the I-team there was no inspection of this plane because it had cleared customs in Houston, Texas, a few hours earlier after a flight from Toluca, Mexico. Among those on board, this man, 30-year-old Mexican national Sebastian Vasquez Gomez, according to a federal complaint. He allegedly proceeded here to Chicago's Gold Coast and checked into a Chestnut Street hotel, where agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration say they arrested him and confiscated the cocaine. Also arrested, this man, 25-year-old Alexis Jimenez Perez of Columbus, Indiana, and the next day in Indianapolis, 39-year-old Sergio Ivan Blas. Agents say these sales ledgers found in Blas's car reveal hundreds of thousands of dollars in drug deals. And tonight, the feds have seized this $8 million jet the group allegedly used and moved it to a hangar in Florida, according to flight records. The plane traveled from Mexico to Texas to Gary, Indiana on several occasions, and authorities say they had it under surveillance. And it hasn't been in hiding. This aviation website, FlightAware, has publicly snapped photos of the jet at several airports in the U.S. and Mexico. The special agent in charge of DEA Chicago declined to discuss the Gary case, but tonight says cartel supply lines are unaffected by global shipping problems. Cartels use every means possible to get drugs from Mexico into the United States and then into the local markets. And in Chicago, that means pr predominantly to the gangs that control the drug markets in Chicago. In the first quarter of fiscal year 21, we seized more methamphetamine than the in entire fiscal year 20. More illicit drugs seized, but also consumed with bootleg concoctions of the potent painkiller fentanyl now causing 75% of all overdose deaths here. Most recent data from April 2020 to April 21 showing record-setting numbers of overdose deaths in Cook County and across the state. And for the first time, 100,000 Americans dying of drug overdoses in one year, a 30% spike. Here at DEA Labs tonight, investigators say four of every 10 counterfeit fentanyl pills tested contain a deadly dose. There's very minimal quality control when, when fentanyl is manufactured on an industrial scale by the cartels in Mexico. It's a superheated business that frequently boils over. In early November, a masked and heavily armed hit squad attacked this beachfront resort in Cancun, Mexico, killing two men. Investigators believe it was a dispute between two rival cartels, the same two cartels that control Chicago's entire illicit drug trade. The leaders of those two Mexican cartels are currently Chicago's most wanted fugitives. For the head of DEA Chicago, one truth remains constant in the cartel world. There's no such thing as nonviolent drug trafficking. You won't hear the phrase war on drugs from DEA's Robert Bell. He says trying to stop the flow of drugs is never really over. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.